Redditors who've won a spend a day with so and so celebrity contest. How was it? Girl I worked with won the opportunity to meet Rihanna backstage before a show. She was one of like 10 people standing in a line as she went from person to person. They were all told before she walked in that she would not be saying anything because her voice needed to be relaxed before going on stage. Rihanna ended up complimenting my friend's dress. I won a radio concert to have a semi-private concert with Jason Mraz. I got to request a song for him to play. He was 15 feet away from me sitting on a stool with his guitar. I'm pretty sure I requested sleep all day or too much food. Afterwards. If you were a contest winner you got to meet him. Get an autograph and take a picture with him. His song The Remedy was written about a friend who was fighting cancer. I asked him how his friend was doing. His face lit up and said he was doing really well and was traveling with them on tour. I also gave him two sunflowers because in the Remedy video he puts a sunflower in a soldier's gun. I did this basically in hopes that when I told this story 13 years later, he would remember me and think I was awesome. Edit. I also have an autograph from David Schwimmer, Ross from Friends. He was in a play and I waited at the back door of the theater. I got carried away with the excitement of meeting David Schwimmer. I yelled I love you David. I kind of forgot I was only standing like 4 feet from him. He looked up and looked me dead in the eyes with no expression. I confused myself and wanted to have not done that. I met Chuck Norris in 7th grade. He told me he likes my attitude. Edit. As of now my parents have had no luck with finding the picture. I know it exists though because sometimes they pull it out and show it to people to embarrass me. I will update again as soon as I find it. Not a day with. But spent several hours at a bar with. Was at a bar with 3 friends in Montana. We hit it off with this guy and ended up bullshitting with him for about 3. 5 hours. It was obvious that he had money because he was looking at a multi-million dollar vacation home. But none of us thought any more about that. Guy was cool. Bought all of our drinks. Refused letting us buy our own and wouldn't let us buy his drinks. Really cool guy. Super chill and unassuming. At the end of the night when the bar was closing. I said. Hey. By the way I am. First and last name. He responded. Hey. I am Derek Etta. I don't follow baseball. But I definitely know that name. I asked him. You mean the Derek Yetta? To which he replied. That would be me. Pretty cool to meet someone famous that way. I really got to see how he is when he is just being himself. Seriously cool guy. Didn't win a competition but I was the only person to turn up to a book signing by my favorite author. Brian Jack. His books were only starting to be published here but I had been reading them for years in England. The school that was supposed to attend had to cancel so I had a whole afternoon talking about all the things that inspired Red Wall. I was only 14 at the time but it really made a huge impact on me. I had drawn him a picture of two of my favorite characters and he was genuinely thrilled with it. This isn't a meet and greet but a story of celebratory good doing. In 1998 Elton John and Billy Joel performed in Auckland and my parents went along. Not having much money and scraping together to attend it they were in the very back row. After they got to the concert it turned out that Billy Joel had bought the tickets to the front three rows and upgraded the back three rows. My parents ended up being front row and when Billy Joel put his guitar pick down on stage mum nabbed it and still keeps it in her wallet to this day. Not a spend a day and not me. But my mother met Seth Meyers while she was on vacation in Bermuda. But had no idea who he was at the time. Apparently he was attending a wedding at the hotel my mother was staying at and all the groomsmen were wearing Bermuda shorts. My mom thought this was adorable and pulled one of them aside to ask about the wedding. She said he was very nice and talked to her for like 15-20 minutes about the wedding. How much fun he's having here. Etc. She then asked him to take a picture with her. Which he did. She was showing me her pictures from the trip when she got home and only found out he was a celebrity after I pointed who he was out to her. Edit. I have texted her to request the picture. Edit 2. 
She no longer has the original picture on the phone but I checked Facebook and she evidently made a cropped version of it her profile pic at some point. Warning. Low quality mom edited pic. Comma HTTP. Imga. Comma B5JCK. Not quite winning. Just being in the right place at the right time. I was about 6 or so and my mom was super into WWF at the time. Wrestlemania came to town. And we happened to live a block from where they were working out. I go in. And I have my hopes up. Because all I want is to meet Stone Cold Steve Austin. At the time, at least according to my mom. He had his whole feud with The Rock happening. Turns out. My wrestler wasn't there. But The Rock was. My mom was pretty stoked. And she chatted with him. He said she had a cute kid. I glowered at him the entire time because he was my worst enemy. As far as I was concerned. Also met China. Who was apparently not all that nice. I barely remember it all. I ended up vacationing at the same resort as Michael Jordan in 2004, in the Turks and Caicos, and he was doing 1v1s against the dads and his kids were 2v2 on the other courts. Super fun dude to hang around. His kids were a blast and we spent many hours in the arcades and on the basketball courts together. Edit. Holy cow there's a lot of MJ hate. He wasn't a jerk. No money was put down. People were respectful of his time and his vacation. I've met him other times and he can be a bit of a jerk if people piss him off. My fiance's little sister had a make a wish this year and she wanted to hang out with Ty Pennington. They said that he was as charismatic as he is on TV and super friendly. I didn't know much about him before but he's a winner in my book. I can answer this one. So I won one with Woody Harrelson. The whole day consisted of talking about his new movie Rampart. I saw an episode of Hulk Hogan's show in which some kid won a day with the Hulkster. It was. Awkward. The kid was just completely over the moon and Hulk was just completely over it. In his defense Hulk had been going through the worst parts of his problems. Pending divorce. Legal crap. Money problems. Kid problems. But it was just awkward. They didn't know what to do. Finally Hulk asked if the kid would like a ride in the boat. Done. So they went and did that. I liked Terry Bollier. I liked him before it was cool too. And I still like him. But man that was one weird show. My dad sat next to Ray Lewis at one of our school concerts. My dad is 6 feet 5 inches and noticed the guy was tall. But didn't realize it was Ray Lewis. So he made some joke about the lack of leg room. But Ray Lewis did not respond. Semicolon. Didn't win a contest or anything. But I have friends that play professional basketball, NBA and overseas. They're all just a big kids at heart like me except they're a foot taller and millions of dollars richer. The big thing you really notice though is their lack of privacy when you go out in public. Whenever we're in the same town and try to grab dinner to catch up. My friends like to have a table in the back corner. It's hard to get through a meal without someone wanting a picture. It wasn't a contest. But interesting anyway. In the early 80s. My mother was an editor at a pretty prestigious newspaper. One of her co-workers said that his cousin was in town and was stopping by. My mom and her co-worker's cousin ended up going out for a casual lunch. Not a date. Close bracket. Apparently this co-worker's cousin was Carl Sagan himself. My mother had no idea who this guy was or how important he was. She ate lunch with a guy and never once brought up the universe or any of the usual topics that one would discuss with Carl Sagan. My co-worker later told my mom how impressed and relieved his cousin was that he was able to have a normal lunch without discussing the same old stuff. TLDR my mother had lunch with Carl Sagan without knowing who he was. Another didn't win a contest but my brother went to school with Donald Faison's son. They were doing their confirmation, I think, and at one point all of the sponsors had to go on this retreat together. I'm a huge Scrubs fan but I'm trying my best not to fanboy. Turns out Donald is super chill. He's really into photography and I had brought my camera cause the place we were at was an upstate NY nature that my Nick self wasn't used to. 
He ends up talking to me about it and we legit talked about photography and our opinions on print versus digital for about 2 hours. I won a day with Ron Jeremy and he fked my sister. Wasn't a meet and greet but I was at, I believe the Latin festival, in Ohio behind Cozy. I was really young but remember we were watching a concert from way back behind the crowd when my dad grabs me and my brother's attention and goes you guys see that man right there? He's the mayor. He walks over. Shakes his hand and talks with my dad for a good minute. The mayor knew my dad as a friend and they referred to each other by their first names. This really isn't as impressive as it sounds but it's impressive to me. Love you dad. 3. I met Arnold Schwarzenegger before he went into politics. I yelled Canaan. At the top of my lunges and he smiled and yelled back crom to hell with you. On a street cross. Not me. But my cousin. She had terminal cancer and was featured in People magazine when they did a story on a hospice that she was living at. She was 17. Living in a hospice. And demanded that she be able to bring her pet chickens with her. So I guess they thought it'd be a good story. Anyways. First thing was that she was wearing an Evanescence t-shirt in the article photo so Amy Lee called her up and they had a few long phone conversations. Which was very nice. Second thing was that the article mentioned that she absolutely adored Johnny Depp. Lo and behold. One of his people saw the article. He called her and invited her entire family to his beach house where they were filming pirates. He basically gave six people an all expense paid vacation for a week. Showed them around the movie set. Introduced them to other celebrities. He had extravagant sit down dinners with them every night and everyone said he was incredibly humble and generous. She died a few months later. But I still remember her excitement when she told me all about her vacation with Johnny. Edit. Typo. Guess we're going with I met saw celebrity one story so I'll throw mine in. I was coming back to Australia from Argentina after visiting family. Sydney is where the majority of people coming from overseas go through immigration to get into the country. I was 12 at the time waiting in line to get my passport checked when I realized Billy Connolly is at the front. He had a guitar and a small carry-on bag with him. I said to my mum I think that's Billy Connolly she had no idea who that was but I said it loud enough for him to hear me. He looked back at me and smiled before going through customs. Michelle Fan. The YouTube makeup guru. She felt kind of fake. Like giving empty compliments. She became passive aggressive at one point. Didn't win a contest but I got a guitar lesson from Mark Tremonti. The current guitarist of Alter Bridge and Tremonti and former guitarist of Creed. He was one of the most down to earth musicians that I have ever met. He was genuinely interested in hearing what we had to say. And had nothing but nice things to say. He said to me throughout the lesson that he loved my guitar and was impressed with how fat I could pick up techniques and that I was one of the best students he's had. After the lesson he gave us a tour of his live rig and we got to watch soundcheck. That will always be a day that I will remember. It wasn't a contest that I won but in my school we had a anti-bullying group. Which one day was getting a visit from Sir Ian McKellen. I wasn't in the group but me and some friends heard about it and we just wanted to meet the man that played Gandalf. I took my trilogy book of Lotta ready just in case and we hung outside the room he was meeting and hoping to catch him on the way out. The headmaster wasn't happy about us being there and was saying we should go away but I think he and McKellen heard us outside and asked what was happening. So when he heard he allowed us to come in and sit on the floor as he spoke. I was pretty starstruck to say the least. Anyway as he was finishing he was doing autographs for people. Well I was nervous but pulled my book out which he did the sweetest signature in. With a self drawn picture of Gandalf. Refused to even read that book now. After it had finished me and my friend hovered downstairs hoping to catch him once more to thank him for letting us come in and we chanced asking for a picture which he was happy to do. Has to be the coolest experience with meeting a celebrity so far for me. Obligatory didn't win a contest. But I was staying at a hotel in Wichita. Kansas and I ended up meeting Wayne Newton. I was in like 7th grade and I asked him for a picture. He took one with me and when we left he kissed me on the cheek. Super nice guy. 
ran into John Malkovich at a dive bar in New Orleans called Johnny White's. I realized who he was and the bar was pretty empty so while I was ordering my drink I looked over at him and asked has anyone ever told you that you have a startling resemblance to John Malkovich? He slyly smiled and and told me that he gets that all the time. I laughed and walked out with my drink in hand. Terry Bradshaw held me when I was 2 weeks old and commented on us having the same amount of hair. He then told my parents this boy's gonna do big things. Double quote. MR. Bradshaw was wrong. My friend won a contest at my school to meet Mother Mother, who was as one of my favorite bands. But gave the ticket to me because he'd never heard of them. I was about 7th in line out of 10. And they were really excited because I knew who they were and wasn't just meeting them to say I did. They were incredibly nice and signed an extra poster for me. Met Jack Nicholson at an after party and all he did was talk nonsense but for some reason I thought it was all funny. I had just watched The Shining for the first time a day before that. When I was an intern for a big TV studio and again for a big film studio. I got to spend many days with a lot of celebrities, press junkets etc. Dot. They were all super chill and down to earth behind the scenes. I'm 36 now but in my childhood I had a friend that was born with just one functional lung. He wasn't expected to live to 16 so make a wish did their thing and he got to spend a day with Bo Jackson. This is at the height of the whole bonos era so it was pretty cool. He got to tour the Royals locker room. Hit balls at batting practice. Pretty much everything a kid then could dream of. As time went by. Bo continuously called my friend. Dane was his name. And they spent many more days together. Bo genuinely cared about him and became a family friend. A few years ago Dane died in a freak boating accident at the age of 34. He had received a lung transplant by his 20s and was living as any other healthy person. He had a wife and two kids. I have to believe that Bo Jackson's friendship and sincere concern kept my friend alive long enough to get the transplant and live his life as long and full as he could. My younger brother had cancer and was nominated to have a Make-A-Wish type day, with a different charity for non-terminal kids. He wished to meet Terry Pratchett. So the charity paid for us to go to the Disc World convention back in 2010. And we got into a few exclusive events and even had dinner with him and Stephen Baxter, as they were writing The Long Earth at the time. He was super lovely and we all just chatted about video games throughout dinner. Met the Black Keys. They were pretty nice and interacted with us pretty well. I got nervous and told an awful dad joke to which they responded with some pretty cringe-worthy laughs. Obligatory didn't win it. But I had to accompany my then boss to some kind of company meeting at our foreign ministry. Ran into the, then, foreign minister and was clueless what to say. So I greeted him with a very dialect version of good morning. He was delighted and we chatted a few minutes. 10 stroke 10. Would treat politicians as human beings again. So late to the party but I have to share this dark part of my childhood. Not a contest story but oh well. When I was 4 or 5. I had an inexplicable obsession with Rosie O'Donnell. This was during the days of the Rosie O'Donnell show. Before she had come out. But I was obsessed with her and her show. Thinking back my interest was probably sparked by my true love for Harriet the Spy. Always loved that gully. Golly? Dot. Anyway. Rosie O'Donnell was 5 year old Sunflower Storm's hero. So much so that for my 5th birthday Christmas present, fellow December babies understand this usual sting. My mom blew my mind with a large stuffed Rosie O'Donnell doll that said, Hey cutie patootie. When you squeeze it. And tickets to see her show. So. We went. When she came out I held my doll up screaming and she pointed right at me. I nearly pissed myself. Anyway I don't fully remember how my mom made it happen but we got to meet her after the show and I remember the joyful tears streaming down my face when she hugged me. Rosie was so so nice. She signed my doll. Gave me a book. Talked to me for a little while asking lots of questions about me. We took a picture. And it was the best day of my little life. All these years later my family still shames me about it. Whatever. Rosie's cool. Not me but a friend's sister. 
She met Justin Bieber at a meet and greet. Apparently he's a rude asshole. I met Billy Corgan after the last show he had in Sydney, Oceania album, back in 2012. We went into a little side room full of about 20 or so people. And we pulled out into the hall for a meet and greet. Photos etc. His bodyguard came out and informed us that he was feeling a bit sick. And didn't want people to hug him. He came out. Set his phone down on the ground and went through one by one saying hello. Making small talk and signing something. I brought out a photo I took at one of his shows to have him sign and he asked me where I got the photo and complimented it. And signed my husband's zero t-shirt. In the photo he took with both of us. He seemed in a way to hunch down, I'm quite short, for my photo. And for my husband's photo, he is 6 feet, he was standing very clearly as straight as possible. Since Billy is quite tall. Overall. He seemed friendly but very very shy. He seemed as nervous to be meeting us as we were him. Haha. <laughs> my mum ended up waiting for a delayed flight with Orlando Bloom and Miranda Kerr. Apparently he's super sweet and insisted on helping my mum with her bags etc. Didn't win a contest or anything and wasn't me blew it. I'm from the states and my grandpa lived and worked in England for a while when he was around my age, 24, I'm guessing. While well, he was in a bar and met B. B. King and had a beer with him. My dad and his best friend met Bill Engvall and his wife at a casino bar in Vegas and had dinner with them. I believe him and his best friend were both drunk as well. My grandma grew up with Don Johnson, James Crockett on Miami Vice. I've met a few celebrities but it was more at concerts where they are signing stuff book signings so not very personal. I met a UFC fighter. Melvin Gillard. At a friend's party in Houston. My friend runs a car repair shop and him and Melvin hit it off. Because. You know. It never hurts to know a good mechanic. He was an extremely relaxed guy. Very low key. Not aggressive or filled with testosterone rage like maybe you'd picture a UFC fighter. I talked with him about some of his fights I'd seen to get his perspective and we had a really great conversation about MMA. And then he saw that the PS3 and started playing God of War. Living in Moscow. I've met several Russian celebrities that I didn't know were celebrities until someone told me. I think a lot of famous people crave normal interactions with people who don't put them on a pedestal. The divas are the exception. Rather than the rule. Didn't win anything. But the night before I left for freshman year of college I was up late and nervous. So I watched a little TV. The only thing that held my attention was a VH1 mini doc about Megadeth. The fact that a few of them were rejected by Metallica stood out to me. The following day my parents and I are driving down the turnpike. Stop at a rest area. And hop out. Parked right outside of the rest stop is Megadeth's bus. Gigantic bus. Megadeth's logo. Etc. Then the band comes walking out of the rest stop. I pause for a moment because these things never happen. And for some reason I feel like it's a sign that college is going to be okay. One of them saw me looking. So I threw up the horns and said. Metallica sucks. They all turned around. Threw the horns. And immediately got on the bus. College was fine. 7 stroke 10 would recommend. Not exactly a day thing but I was on holiday in the states and I went to WWE Raw and met Sheamus when he was champ at the hotel after the show. He's surrounded by fans signing autographs etc. And I said I saw you at local show in Ireland years ago and he gets all excited and we talked for about an hour. Very cool guy and was asking me about my life as much as I asked about his and why I was over in the states and seemed genuinely interested. Didn't win a contest. But I once got the opportunity to meet Mick Thompson from Slipknot at a meet and greet. He's a big. Intimidating looking guy. Around 6 feet 5 inches. He's super relaxed. Though. He signed my copy of All Hope Is Gone, their newest album at the time. This was in 2009, and we took a picture and chatted about guitars for a few minutes. From what I've been told, everyone else in the band is also very nice. Bit late to this but party but still. Not me but my friend's parents. 
They were on holiday in New York absolutely loving life and they get into this elevator to come down about 20 floors or something and there's this big black dude in there. So they jump in and my friend's dad will literally talk to anybody. So this guy says. Hey. You guys on holiday I take it? Judging by their very British accent I imagine. So they get into a big conversation about being from Manchester and then my friend's dad chews his ear off about working as a gas engineer for Eon over in England and yada yada. So he asks what he does to which he responds that he's a professional rapper. So he says alright cool. What's your name? Because my daughter may have heard you. To which he replies. JZ. Obviously they had no idea who he was but my friend freaked out when they rang her a few minutes afterwards. Not me. But my dad got to meet Jimmy Savile when he was a kid and was invited back to meet Savile privately. Luckily. My dad couldn't stay and had to go home. My dad probably dodged a bullet on that one. I met the dogs that played Summer and Grey Wind from Game of Thrones a few months ago. They are just some family's dogs in Belfast. Ireland. My wife and I took a tour of Game of Thrones filming sites and one of the stops was at a beer garden where the dog's owners brought them in to meet everyone. We got to take pictures with both of them. Grey Wind licked my face and Summer let my wife rub his belly. Didn't win a contest. But met a lot of DJs while working at a festival. Martin Garrix is an incredible dude. Greets. Hugs. Shakes hands. Talks to you, it's like you've been friends with him for 10 years. Steve Aoki looked a bit tired. But is a very nice and friendly person despite that. Actually. All of them were really chill, Netsky even hung out with us to talk a bit. Don Diablo is an amazing amazing dude. He invited everyone who was at his set onto the stage and snapchatted us all when he came to our workplace behind the scenes. And later in the night I got to hang out with Pep and Rash who shoved Grey Goose in my face until I was totaled and then they took me backstage to Don Diablo's set. I once entered a competition. With the though that I was never going to win. To meet the author Garth Nix. I surprisingly won but because I came from a poor family we couldn't afford for me to go all the way out to London to meet him. To this day I always think back on it and regret so much not being able to meet him. I met Teller, as in Penn and, at a show they did a while ago. I waved hi. He held up a muffin and said most important meal of the day. Double quote. Since he spoke to me. I can only assume Penn had him killed and summarily replaced. Back in 1999 I got a chance to go through the Make-A-Wish Foundation to meet Stone Cold Steve Austin. Which to 7 year old me was a big freaking deal. Anyway. Me and my family drove all the way from South Alabama to Greensboro. NC, I believe cause my mom refused to fly, and got to hang out backstage with him before the show. The problem was I was so scared starstruck that I refused to talk. But he was really awesome and signed a t-shirt and took pics with me and my mom. I believe I also got pics with the Godfather and Gangrel but I can't really remember. Obligatory didn't win a contest but I met Eddie Vedder backstage at a festival this summer. Suwoop a nice guy. We had a photo taken with him and then chatted with him for a bit.